Hey there YouTube. This video is going to be included on the Trend Spider store. Recently they had a hackathon for this year. In the last month you could submit as many indicators as you wanted to their store and compete in a, in a competition for prizes. One of the submissions that I made was the triple stochastic RSI. If you hold tight through this video at the uh, near the end I will show you how to add this to your charts if you're using the TrendSpider platform. So to get started here, I'm going to <clears throat> briefly describe just the general review here, the premise of the indicator, and then we'll get into features and usage. So first off, this is just like Stochastic RSI that has been around for a long time. But as you might have been able to see here is there's three Stochastic RSIs. And very simply, this is to simulate a multi time frame analysis. So it's an often common practice to have multiple time frames when setting up trade ideas and managing them. So, for example, you could look at daily, weekly, and monthly. You could use the five minute, the 15 minute, and maybe the hourly. There's so all kinds of combinations. So, I had this idea quite a long time ago to provide a couple of multipliers and they simply are applied to the K, D, and RSI values. So personally, I've been using this privately for a long time, and I had an idea for it. The hackathon gave me an excuse to try to implement it. And it was also fun to try to implement this in the TrendSpider platform. The coding language is JavaScript. They have uh, some of their own flavorings, I'll say, out at the top of it and uh, makes for a little bit of a challenge if you've scripted for any other platform. Overall, it's very simple and they have an AI tool now, even though I've been developing software for about 20 years now in the corporate world, it's always nice to, to have some extra tools to make either conversions or uh, to see what ideas and how they could be approached uh, might come out on the platform. So I really appreciate that. Now moving forward, the extra idea that I'd had for this indicator uh, that I had previously developed for, for another platform was this table here. So the table is giving just a little bit of uh, stats, a little bit of historical data review. And uh, without going into too much detail just yet, I would just call attention to it. Call attention to the fact that it tells you how many historical bars it has reviewed when you see all these numbers here. And then you also have a sentiment as well as uh, potential uh, locating for shorting or, or going long. Okay, so to head back to the stochastic RSIs, we have three of them. They are color coded for fast, slow, and slowest. Right, all the standard uh, layout is, is provided. So you have the 80 line, which most might consider overbought. And then you also have the 20 line, which I think is conventionally considered oversold. Uh, and then you have the 50 line, which is your uh, what I would consider pivot. Okay, so you get all that. You can head into here. I need to make some adjustments. The colors only adjust the stochastic plots. They do not adjust the table currently. So apologies for that. It's not something I was aware of <laughs> that uh, wouldn't transfer to the table uh, or the overlay as they call it in TrendSpider. So I'll, I'll get to that in an update. Uh, for now, just know that you can come in here and the sto stochastic st stats editing button is for adjusting where the table prints out. So if you don't like it in the lower pane and you want it up here, you can make that adjustment here. So how do I use the stochastic RSI and kind of how did I design it to be used? Very simply, I like to pit the fast stotch against the slow and the slowest. So when the slow or when any of the stochastics are over 50, I consider that to be a bullish signal. I don't necessarily care about the 80 and 20. I more care about is the stochastic above or below 50? And that gives me a general sentiment. Now the fast one versus slow and slowest, it's going to be the noisiest one. It's also going to be the one that uh, potentially can call out various things near the market price in which the events might have occurred. So I don't tend to rely on it until I've reviewed slow and slowest. When the slow and slowest are over 50, then I consider that to be very strong 
indication of bullish sentiment. Inversely, when they are both below 50, then I consider that to be bearish. My ideal entry type using this indicator is waiting for the slow and slowest to be above 50 or below, and then look for fast stocks, this uh, like neon or lime green, to be directly opposed on the opposite end. So for example, here on the week of September 16th, we had the fast stock completely on the other end, while the slow and slowest were at the high end. That is an entry potentially to go long. And then I also like to see the fast stock cross over 50. That's a sign that I need to start managing the position. So for example, on this week here, we got, we got a closure, okay, and then potentially for a long entry. Now these can be long trades. It's a $26 move, 11% or so. You can start to manage it as we cross 50. So you could be trimming here, here, and here. Obviously, how you decide to use this is, is something that uh, you will have to come up with on your own, but just showing you exactly how I use it and, and kind of what this is for. Okay, so for a short setup, you can see that we're kind of set up for that already here. Okay, now obviously <laughs> they don't all work. And so the other difference that I will call to is I like to see the bands mostly flat. So I think even this one was probably even better uh, than this one here. So this the slowest one, we're seeing it to be quite wide between its K and D values. I'd like to see them more flat. Okay, so they typically are not very long trades. Looking at this whole thing here, okay, we see a lot of oscillation with the fast dodge RSI against the slow and slowest RSIs. Now, given everything I've said, it might already be apparent. But what this table shows you is current values for each stotch. And this is a count of bars where the stotch has either been above or below the 50. So currently right now, the fast dodge has been above the 50 line for 13 bars. Now you can come and look over here at the averages. So on average, a fast dodge spends 11 bars above the 50 and 10 below. Okay, same thing for the slope and the slowest. So now you can read all these and you can understand what they mean. So looking at these values here, and I, I don't think I can bar replay, so we'd have to kind of count these up which is why I added this table, because it does that for you. Looking at these, you can see this one was 7 bars. By this one, we were 14 bars with the fast below 50. Potentially, maybe not, because of this little peak right here. But we'll just, for example, say that's what it was. Looking at that, seeing these two stotches showing a bullish sentiment, um, this would be an optimal long entry, say, versus this one, because we might still have more bars... Okay, seven bars, we'd have like three more weeks potentially where it would be under 50. So we'd want to wait here where it's over the average or it's at the average at the best chance of getting the immediate move that we all crave for the trade idea to work out. So uh, coming back to another thing that I, I don't necessarily call out in the data is another use case. This is what I call the pinch. And this is where all the stochastic RSIs are crammed together at either the 80 above or 20 below lines. When that happens, that can be a nice exhaustion point, either on the buy or sell side. So you can see we had one here on the sell side, and we had another nice one here at the, the buy side. That's another unique opportunity that I have tended to have found is really accurate on this indicator. Okay, so even here, these trades can kind of take a little while, but you can see this was another kind of pinch. The best ones, though, I find are when they're all really squeezed together. So now another uh, unique feature for TrendSpider that I think far, far outperforms other platforms like uh, Thinkorswim, Finviz, uh, even TradingView's script-based market scanning is, is subpar. It's really no comparison to what TrendSpider can do. So uh, looking at all of this, you can come in and create your very own market scanner, and you can use this indicator to kind of just scan the market for you, which is, is just kind of a dream. So what you want to do 
after you click market scanner it's going to create a new scanner for you click on indicator and pick your time frame so we're going to go ahead and pick the weekly time frame here and we're going to look at indicators and then we want to look for triple stochastic so it's going to bring up quite a lot it's can be a little overwhelming and maybe they will improve this <laughs> selection screen at some point but for now go ahead and do your search triple stochastic RSI type out as much as you need to filter out anything else you're not looking for now one of the things I coded into this is what's called a signal it's kind of like an alert on other platforms but what you can think of it as is, is really just a, a binary state something is true or something is false and you get a little extra on top of that they monitor for when it was true and it's still true when it was true and it disappeared it's now false and you'll see what i mean here in a second so one of the things that i coded in is a signal for when the uh, fast stochastic is uh, it, the current value is either at or over either one of these values okay so at 11 bars uh, on average over 50 so right now we're over that okay so how do you scan for that you come over to here you look at you kind of have to mouse over these and let the tooltip load unfortunately because i <laughs> i may i may need to uh, decrease the the verbiage here but uh, this one right here fast dodge at over average above streak so that means above 50. so when this number is over or at this number so you click that now this is where I said it's it's a boolean state but then they track the changes of the state and this is kind of how you get to that so did the signal you can scan for did the signal just emerge on the current candle and you can also uh, adjust it to it had emerged at some point we don't care necessarily when we just want to know that it's active you can also uh, scan for when it just disappeared so just like it just emerged you can also scan for when it just disappeared also you can look for anything where this is not active so maybe you're looking for a fresh trade and not something that might be exhausted you would use not active so we're going to go ahead and say signal active here and i'm going to scan because i like to do a live market scan i'm going to scan current candle and we're going to just scan by default Dow Jones 30. Okay, Apple pops up as we would expect because the current value for fast stotch being over 50 line is 13 and the average is 11. Okay, so we also get to see that Amazon is in the same predicament. So it's at 17 right now and the average is 11. So the fast stotch on average stays above 50 for 11 weeks. Look at uh, Goldman Sachs, okay? And so you can use this scanner. You can combine tons of other indicators. You can also do, so just like the stochastic RSI indicator emulates different time frames, you can also set up additionals here. So we can say, I want to know when the triple and the daily fast stotch is at or above the, the averages. So I don't know if anything will come up. That would be pretty interesting to see. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hide that one for now. All right, so you can also change this, like I said, to signal not active. So let's look at that. Let's see which ones are not potentially at a point of exhaustion. I'm going to guess that there's going to be some. Okay, yeah, here we go. So Microsoft, for example. Okay, so Microsoft, it's at two. So it's only spent two bars below 50 right now but before that let's see right here is when it went to above 50 okay and right there is where it closed out so 17 bars it spent over the 50 line for the fast touch and then it ended right there so about three three months so very interesting uh here's here's a little bit of a pinch not really yeah, Microsoft's been kind of a beast. Okay, here's a really good pinch right here. This is a good one. See how they're all flat back in October 2022. So you'll have to experiment with this, but now you have a very good idea, hopefully, of how to use this indicator and some of the powerful features that have been integrated into it to take advantage of the 
trend spider scanning feature. You can also use this in the strategy tester and build strategies off of this. I would highly recommend taking a look at the strategy tester with this indicator. And what you could really do is, is build out a playlist of stocks, a watch list of stocks that work the best with this and a particular setup that you like. Could be the ones that I've baked in, could be your own that you observe. And uh, maybe we'll make another video to show how to use this in a strategy tester. But in the interest of keeping this short, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and talk about how to add this to your chart. So to add this to your chart, you can come up here to the indicators section. And you can search for triple stochastic RSI. And you will see it down here with this little plus button. And it says when you mouse over that the indicator is available at TrendSpider Trading Tools Store. When you click on that... Uh, it's going to guide you through adding this to your account. It is completely free, and you do kind of subscribe to it because you will receive um, alerts up here in the alert area. That will tell you anytime I make updates to it. You can also go to trendspider.com, find the store page, and do the same thing. I would probably just search for Stotch or Triple, and you'll see it right here, Triple Stochastic RSI by Trade Seekers. That's me. And then you'll have the page here where you can add it to TrendSpider. And even more cool, I kept it open source. So you can come down here. And if you are so inclined, you can look and see how I coded all this up. And maybe you get some ideas for yourself. You can take the code, make your own version of it, uh, whatever you want to do. So like I said, I'll be adding this video directly to this store page. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to cover this indicator well enough for this first video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video. I'm also in the TrendSpider Discord, so if you join TrendSpider's Discord, uh, you reach out to me there, and uh, we can talk and exchange ideas. And if you've got anything you want me to add to the indicator, you can let me know there. So thank you for watching, and uh, happy trading.